What's up everybody, Parker here. I have an awesome video today showing you how to set up a custom Venn diagram. There is a custom visual Venn diagram in the uh, custom visual marketplace, but I found that it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. It's not that customizable. So I learned how to build one myself. Uh, so we're gonna go through all the steps necessary to create what I have on the screen right now. As you can see, we have a normal Venn diagram where we have like a blue side, a red side, and an overlap in the center and we have uh, numbers indicating how many records uh, fall into each category. So this is also dynamic. So as you click on different elements in the slicer, we see those numbers changing. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into how we would set up uh, a Venn diagram like this. This uh, takes from a few tricks that I've showcased on my channel previously. So we'll walk through each one individually and we'll end up with an output that looks like this. So we'll hop on over to another file if you want to take a look at my data, I have two different tables. So my first table is uh, completed training. So this is a list of all the employees that completed training uh, in certain months. We have a similar table called logged hours, just seeing uh, which employees have logged hours in those months. So you'll see uh, off the bat, there is some overlap. So we see John has logged hours in August, September, and uh, just August and September. But if we go to completed training, we see John has completed his training for August, September, and October. So that's kind of the overlap that we're talking about. There are, uh, there's the same employee on both tables for the same months. And then uh, we also have a month table. So this month table is just gonna set up our slicers um, and we are joining our tables based on that month. So the month, uh, the months August, September, and October are gonna join to each of those two tables I just showed you previously. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the visual piece. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna use a pie chart. Normally I don't say uh, that you should use a pie chart, but it works perfectly for this Venn diagram example. So uh, let's start with our first table, completed training. Simply throw our employees uh, into the values. We'll take our distinct count. So we see we have a distinct count of seven employees over the entire time frame. So we can verify that. So of these employees, since they repeat for certain months, we only have a distinct count of seven total employees. So there are seven employees. Um, then let's go ahead and do a couple things like get rid of the title. Uh, we will make that detail label. Uh, we will make that just the data value. This is up to you. You can make it however you want, but for me it makes the most sense. It's just the data value with a label position on the inside. We'll make it nice and big say 26 just so it's very prominent and there we go so we have our first one set up um, so this is actually going to take another trick here uh, if you've seen my video on how to create conditional formatted line markers and a line chart this is very very similar you can see that we don't have a way to set the color of this pie chart which is a problem because we need it to be a different color on the left and right side. So the way you handle this is you turn this into a bar chart and we can conditionally format this uh, in a bar chart instead of that pie chart. So if we go to data colors, you see uh, we actually still can't conditionally format this and that's because we need something uh, within the axis well. So this axis well is going to open up that conditional formatting. So if we take our employee and throw it in the axis, that doesn't necessarily help us because now we're splitting it up by employee. Uh, we don't want to color conditionally based on employee. We just want to have one color. So in order to get around this, we can just create a calculate column. Uh, I'm just going to call this same value. I'm going to set equal to one. So if we were to look at this in the table, we see that everyone gets a value of one, meaning we're going to be able to throw a column into the well, but it's not going to divide anything since everyone has the same value. So instead, we'll take our same value, put it in the axis, and now you see that everyone is still contained in this one category. So what that does is now in our data colors, we can conditionally format our, uh, our bar color. And the reason we want to conditionally format the bar color instead of simply picking one is because we want these colors to be transparent. Uh, so in order to do that, let's go ahead and create a measure. And let's make this side blue. So we're going to create a measure called blue and it's gonna be equal to the hex code. Hex code is uh, a way that you can specify a color, and we'll specify the color blue, which uh, following the RGB format, it's uh, 0000FF. 
and to make it transparent, let's give it 50% transparency. We put a 50 on the end. So there we go, that's our blue color. So now we can uh, conditionally format based on field value. And let's use that new field we just created called blue. And you can see the blue kind of turns into this kind of light purple because of that transparency. And now that we've done this, simply turn it back to a pie chart. And that looks awesome. So let's go ahead and turn off the legend. Um, and let's also make the background, uh, uh, let's turn off the background. So we see we have no background now. So that looks great. Let's go ahead and copy and paste and kind of line this up with a little bit of overlap in the middle. Um, so we can kind of go through the same steps here. So instead of the completed training table, we're now gonna look at log hours. Uh, we can take the employee from our logged hours and use count distinct to get a distinct count. And it's still blue, so we don't want blue, so we actually have to turn it back to a bar chart to turn it into maybe red. So we'll turn it back into a bar chart. We can use the same same value in the axis because uh, even though it's on a different table, it will still work for us since it's just the same value. And then we need to go back to our formatting, data colors, and change this conditional formatting. But instead of blue, let's create a new measure called red. And we will set this equal to the hex code for FF000050. Uh, so FF000 gives us red, and then 50 gives us that 50% transparency. We will set our default color uh, field value based on red. Awesome, and now back to a pie chart. Wonderful, uh, so we're almost there. That only leaves us with the overlap left. Um, so we will do that by creating a card, and we can just position this card right in the middle of our uh, Venn diagram. So if we just put something right there, that looks like a good place. We just need a measure to tell us what that overlap is. And we can put this measure on any table in our, uh, in our model, but let's just go ahead and put it on the completed training. I will call this overlap. And with just a couple lines of code, we can create that. Uh, we'll create a variable. Um, we'll call this variable training. And that's just going to be our values from our employee column. So values gets the distinct values of that column. So we're gonna create another variable for hours. And that uses the values as well of the employee column. So we'll get our distinct employees from that table. So then we're gonna create basically the intersection of these two with the intersect function. So I'm just gonna call this intersection. And the nice handy intersect function is going to look at which, uh, which employees from each table will overlap and just return the employees that are on both tables. So we can intersect training with hours. And finally, we'll return count rows of our intersection. So this, this gives us all of the people who are on both tables. And to test that out, we will throw that right in our card. Make sure to highlight the card. And we'll take our overlap, put it in the fields, and we see four. So a couple of uh, items here. We'll turn off the background. We'll make that data label white. And we'll set up the same formatting because it has a different font. We'll set it to... Uh, to this font, which is the same as the, uh, the pie charts. And we can turn the text size down to, I think 26 was the other ones. So that looks pretty good. And then finally, we can turn off our category label. And there we go. So now we have a nice looking Venn diagram. I also wanna take one step to make this dynamic. So we're just gonna create a nice slicer here on top, just like I did in the other file. So from our month, uh, our month table, we have a month column. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw that in our slicer and just do a couple changes to make that look nice. So horizontal orientation. Cool, that looks pretty good. With our, uh, we want our slicer header off and we'll reposition that a little bit. There we go. Uh, so now, we can just click on each one individually. And since we already have a relationship set up from the month table to filter both of our fact tables, 
uh, this will work perfectly. So if we click on August, we see that uh, there were six people on the completed training. Uh, there were five people on the logged hours and three of them uh, overlapped. So three of them were on both tables. So we can multi-select months and include October as well. So we see that, you know, dynamically it's, it's changing to show us which people were on which table and which people uh, overlapped and were on both. Uh, so that's the purpose of a Venn diagram, but now you can set one up, uh, set up a custom Venn diagram so you don't have to rely on a custom visual that may not be formatted the way you want. Uh, custom visuals are going to have limited formatting um, and you're not going to be able to do as much stuff as, as you may want to do. So this gives you a little bit more flexibility. I hope you like this trick. I found this really, really interesting. So if you like this trick, make sure you subscribe to the channel, check out the BI Elite website, and I will see you in the next video.